Aloha. We're, welcome to American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and today's title is Trump No Longer the Kingmaker, MAGA GOP Denied. You know, for once, we had a politician that spoke the truth. I know as strange as that may sound, but we did. And uh, you'll never guess who it was. It's Mitch McConnell, leader of the, uh, minority leader of the Senate. And here's what he said. Basically, he said, um, we failed. We failed the moderate Republicans. We failed the independents. They didn't swing our way because uh, the, the membership and the leadership um, exhibited chaos, negativity, and strong attacks. And he said that made them scared and therefore they didn't vote for the GOP. I think that's interesting and, and by gosh, it's true. Uh, this uh, red wave never occurred and it's not going to occur as long as they have people in the party. Um, I'll mention Donald Trump is the, the ringmaster of that. Um, trying to create chaos, trying to create negativity, and attacking everybody and anyone. So, without further ado, let me go to our guests. Today we have Jay Fidel, our co-host, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair, our contributor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Tim. So, Jay, I just read uh, Mitch McConnell's uh, damning statement of why, um, number one, the GOP didn't take the Senate, and why the House is as razor-thin margin uh, they'll take the house, but it's a razor, razor thin margin. Uh, what do you think about that comment I just read? Mm. Mm. I don't care about McConnell. Yeah, I, I know. Like, I don't like McConnell. I don't. I know that. McConnell. <laughs> but what about the statement? <clears throat> well, you know, maybe, maybe uh, you know, his perception is right, um, and um, you know, you can't really argue with that. However. And the, the fundamental question, which he doesn't really address, um, is, uh, is, is, is Trump a magician such that um, all of that doesn't matter and they can recover anyway? And uh, I think that's the, the fundamental question where we're here to talk about today and, and uh, tomorrow on, uh, on t uh, American Issues Take Two. Um, because uh, we're, at a, we're at another inflection point. Every week seems to be an inflection point, honestly. Um, as to whether whether the damage that that um, that Trump took over these elections is is going to last beyond the news cycle, and uh, I want to I want to full disclosure I want to tell you it's not. He's going to recover. He's a master. He's a he's a master ringleader, um, as you said, and it, he's going to find a way to distract us all from that, including the Republicans, including Mitch McConnell. Before you know it, we'll be back to Trump as we used to know him during his administration, uh, creating uh, creating chaos and then saying, I alone can fix the chaos. It's, it's out of the, you know, the autocrat playbook and it's really scary. We'll be back to scary them. You know, good news, you guys, there's going to be plenty to talk about in the next couple of years. I promise you that. That's a guarantee. And I wouldn't take your money on a pizza bet. Well, you don't get any more of those from me. Yeah. Um, I've lost too many times. So, Jay, I mean, the title of the show is uh, Donald Trump's no longer the kingmaker. I mean, every candidate he endorsed, anointed uh, in a swing state, be it governor, be it senator, be it House representative, they all lost. Every swing state lost his, his recommended candidate. What's that say about his uh, ability to um, sway, sway the voters to his liking? Well, what does it say about his ability to pick good candidates? You know, he, he picked candidates that uh, that agreed with him on the big lie. That's what he did. Right. And uh, 300 of them, which is really scary. And the fact that only 150 of them um, got elected is also scary because that means that um, the people voted for 150, um, you know, um, a big lie right. you know, people. And, 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 and that, that's very scary because that's anti-democratic. To vote for it, to be a big lie uh, ascriber is really to say, I don't believe in democracy or the peaceful transfer of power. Um, I believe we have to have it out in the street. That, that's what these people are saying. And we don't, we don't need no stinking constitution anymore. Um, so, so I mean, I, you know, I, I think that Trump is, is a bad, um, he's bad on the big lie. It's a mistake. He should have stopped all that already. Um, and he shouldn't have picked candidates who uh, ascribe to it. Um, but 
But it's not the candidates that are going to carry him home. It's the people. It's the base. And they still believe in the big lie. They may not have pushed his candidates hard enough, um, although that you know pushed 150 of them. Um, but they, you know, they will come around. He will make them come around. He will entertain them. Uh, he will create uh, enough entertainment and chaos well, yeah. to, to have to have them to have them support whatever he wants yet again. So I, I, mean, I don't. Doesn't think he have to entertain? That, doesn't he have to entertain the independents and the moderate GOP? back into submission, which he had them before, but he did, didn't have them on the midterm election. Doesn't he have to get those two groups uh, under his thumb? And how does he do that? He's working on it right now, Tim. He's working on it right now with whatever brain trust he has. And they're telling him how to do it. They're telling him how to distract everybody. I guarantee you guys, no bet, no bet. I guarantee you within a couple of weeks, you know, we're going to see another, last night or whatever, whenever he, uh, you know, uh, made his um, his speech, his, uh, threw his hat in the ring. And that was um, entertainment. That was distraction. That took the heat off the question that you raised about, you know, what happened with him? What happened with uh, Election Day? Why why didn't he, you know, succeed better? He, he took the edge off it by making that uh, announcement. I okay. guarantee in the next two weeks, we're going to see something else that comes from him or one of his acolytes that likewise distracts us and takes us off the truth and into another Netherland kind of reality. I guarantee it's going to happen again and again and again. He will control the agenda. He will control it between now and 2024. Um, and that's what it's about, you know. And these people, you know, the independents, uh, the ones who are not necessarily committed to him, they will also be distracted. They will be distracted by the criticism of Biden. Anything goes wrong in the Biden administration, he will he will attack Biden, and they will come along on the attack. Um, so I, I have no level of optimism about this. I and I think actually the media was much too um, much much too uh, supportive of the the Democratic quote win, which was what was predicted anyway. We we predicted that. The Democrats would take the Senate and lose the House. Isn't that we said for, for months already? We're saying that the actual numbers don't make that much difference. We can talk about that, but they don't make that much difference. And the reality is, Trump is going is going to be back. Okay, I'd like to bet a pizza with you some day soon. Anytime, <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia. What do you think of all this? Why Why did Donald? I mean, it's the earliest in history that a candidate has thrown his hat in the ring for the next presidential election. We're two years away from November. We're a year and a half from where the, 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 you know, the real heat of the election uh, is roaring through things. That's why, in your opinion, why so early? Other than, well, now I'll let you answer. Greed. Greed. <laughs> he can grift all of his followers in a much stronger way now. Um, and, and I think he's hoping that it will affect Merrick Garland, his, you know, weighing of whether or not to charge him or indict him or just what he should do. Cynthia, can you explain how that works? Why would Merrick Garland not be as inclined? I know there was an article about this in the Times yesterday. Uh, why would Merrick Garland not be inclined to uh, indict because Donald Trump has thrown his hat in the ring? How does that work? Well, partly, I think, and I'm not an expert on all this, but partly, I think it's because of the different, you know, once you start going after candidates, then then it's like, you know, a slippery slope till everybody's going after the other candidate. And then it's this whole big, you know, free for all going after the candidates. And the Federalist Society has a really odd, um, I don't know if it's odd is the right term, a very severe, that's not the right word either. Uh, they're very strong on protecting presidential everything. Presidential uh, secrecy, presidential authority, presidential everything. And so here he's going to be going for president, right? Well, you know, so 
I have a couple of quotes from. Well, hang on before before you get oh. to the quotes. I want I want to address that. Um, what's to prevent any senator or any House representative or any governor um, to say, who's being investigated for for federal crimes? What's to prevent anyone in the future to say, "Oh, they're hot on my trail. Um, I'm about ready to be indicted." And I don't care what season it is. I'm throwing my hat in the ring for president of the United States. It's a $250 filing fee. Come on. Do we really want to go down that road with the Department of Justice to say no, hands off? Don't. Because but any, wait a minute, guys anyone could talking, just say, I'm going to run for president. You're talking about the Federalist Society. That's not the law. Um, you know, yeah. as, I, as I recall, the only place this comes up is in Bill Barr's memo. Uh, that's, that's an internal DOJ memo. That says we don't have investigations of people who are running for office, and, right. and it's, it's very vague, and, it, and just as easily as it was adopted in the first place internally yeah. by the stroke of a pen in the Department of Justice, it can be unadopted. We've we've talked about this before. So, yeah. it, as a matter of policy, if the if the uh, Attorney General had the chutzpah um, to say, "I don't care about that," I'm I, I I see you know I'm going to follow the facts wherever they lead me. Didn't he say that? Um, and he didn't condition that on whether they were candidates or not. He could do it. And, the, and the, really, the question is not so much a question of law or even policy. The, the question is, does he have the chutzpah? Well, I said last show it's going to be within 30 days. So that was a week ago. Guess what? It's three and a half, three weeks. And I think he does get indicted by one entity or another. And um, there was no excuse for throwing your hat in the ring and having that as an excuse not to follow the rule of law. And if the evidence leads it to Donald Trump, so be it. I, I don't I think say, he, I say in response to that, the double cheese press. I say pepperonis, but we'll get okay. past that. Okay, uh, Cynthia, so, so, on, so on a more positive note. <laughs> so, so we interrupted you, Cynthia. Um, what about what we just said? <laughs> what do you think about it? Positive note, <laughs> here's what a few GOP lawmakers have said over the last uh, just 24 hours. Mitt Romney says, it's like the aging pitcher who keeps losing games. Uh, Representative Mo Brooks says, it would be a bad mistake for the Republicans. These are all in regards to Trump. Um, Cynthia uh, Loomis says, uh, Senator Cynthia Loomis says, Ron DeSantis is the leader of the Republican Party. And uh, Shelley, Moore, Shelley Moore Capito said, looking back on 2020 obviously didn't work out. We ought to look forward. And so, and then we've got, you know, one of the big giant donors for Blackstone um, mm -hmm. has removed their, their he's not it came out publicly today saying he's not going to support trump but does I, it really matter I'm donald trump gonna, has a hundred million dollars in his war chest uh that's a lot of money that's a thing now i wondered about once you're a candidate don't you have more restrictions on on reporting what you get and how you spend what you get and so I don't know if that's going to be in his favor, money-wise. Um, if his war chest and war chest, you know, it's well, a my funny sense, thing, my right? sense is that he treats it as his own money. He's probably violated the, um, the Federal Elections Commission a thousand times, a thousand like like, times. like everything else, and uh, nobody's taking him to task about it. But I think one thing you said to you is really, really important, Cynthia, is that DeSantis, okay, is a kind of what do you call it, entertainment leader? May I say that? He didn't have the apprentice, uh, you know, to help him out, but he is an entertainment leader. Uh, and if you if you get by the problem of, uh, um, you know, shipping everybody to uh, Martha's Vineyard, is that where they went? Martha's Vineyard? Uh, you know, the whole country wind up on buses to Martha's Vineyard. And I happen to like Martha's Vineyard, so I'm not personally concerned about that. Um, in, in any event, uh, DeSantis is an entertainment feature. And he's a strong voice. And uh, he is he is the one thing. All these guys making these, you know, anti-Trump statements, it doesn't mean much. It's the base that counts, the ones who are devoted till the, you know, the cows come home to him. Um, but DeSantis could give him a run. DeSantis could occupy the media. And what I want to say, and I hope we can cover this, is 
It's the media. It's the media. The media leads to money. The media satisfies his base. And the media loves his machinations. And the machinations is what keeps him on the headlines every single day. If I asked you guys, um, you know, to cover uh, an insurrection in, in Bogota, Colombia, you would say, no, 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 it's not news. We have to cover the news. What's the news? It's well, how come, how every come, day. How come Fox and CNN and MSNBC did not cover the entirety of his, his announcement campaign? My God, no one covered it. That's uh, very, little- uh, is very uh, refined uh, thinking, Tim. The fact is they cover him all the time. He loves to be the bad but This guy. was a pivotal moment, and they, they covered snippets of it. They didn't yes, but they, the they body cover them. Thing. They cover them over and over and over. So every single new show, every single new journalist show, they show more clips at least twice during each segment of the show, every hour. So we still see it every hour. There's a few of them that won't, right? Um, uh, Ari Melber, he won't show him. He'll talk about him, but he won't show him. Uh, Nicole Wallace won't show him. She'll talk about him, but she won't. It's show not him. enough, though. Let me let me give you another. All the rest well, of look at the Wall study. Street Journal. Look at the um, New York Post. My God, Murdoch put on the front page a man in Florida announces his run. And see page twenty six. I mean, it was hilarious to see the New York Post um, cover Donald Trump's announcement for twenty twenty four presidency, and it says a man in Florida. Puts his hat in the ring. See page 26. Now, that was funny. I got to say something about Florida, you guys, if it's okay. We have to remember Florida is one of the six states that already has voter interference laws on the books that are legal. So the, the legislature and good old Ron DeSantis put all of his own people that were in there in the in the election offices. So and then on top of it, the legislature can override anything that the voters say. And isn't it just amazing that Florida is the only state that went all red? (laughs) Right. So some of these other election deniers that won, I can't help but notice that they're all in those six states. Let me ask you a question. Well, again, the election deniers. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jay. If, if uh, for every time that there was a clip or some fleeting footage on Trump, um, there was a clip or some fleeting footage on DeSantis, likewise doing something outrageous that catches your attention, you know, that, um, that you know, a magnetic event of one kind or another. For everything about Trump, there's the same, you know, call it balanced reporting, although that's not really appropriate, uh, for DeSantis. Wouldn't that help get the attention off Trump? But, th- but they'd... But they're talking about Trump because he knows how to manipulate the press. And right. well, is that why he ran as of uh, yesterday to yeah. rain on Ron DeSantis's parade? Because Ron DeSantis pulled a rabbit out of the hat with Florida. So Isn't my, it Don- my, my second rhetorical is, shouldn't DeSantis do the same thing right now? Shouldn't he rain on Trump's parade? Shouldn't mm-hmm. he declare right now? Wouldn't yes. that help? No. You don't think so? Oh, I do. You know, I'm sorry, but 24 months is a long time, and the American public gets very fatigued very quick. And so you don't want to, uh, you got to fire when you see the whites of their eyes, so to speak. And uh, 24 months in advance is really, it's just foolish. I mean, I don't know. I, they tried to tell Donald Trump, don't do it, don't do it. But, you know, he can't, he can't help himself to stay out of the limelight and out of the media spotlight. So this is my fear. My biggest fear is that Ron DeSantis is actually much worse than Trump. As much as we all can't stand Trump and think he is dangerous. What, man, what would you say why, Cynthia? I will say why. Because he's smarter. He is an Ivy League educated man with a brain. And even though Trump, why, why is he more dangerous? Because he's smarter. Because he's smart enough to not do the stupid things that derailed Trump in the process. He won't do- Well, what were those stupid things? Um, Breaking the law overtly? Yeah, running his mouth. Okay, well, Ron DeSantis is an attorney three times over. 
Exactly. He's so not why is he going to break the law? He everything. probably won't break the law. He, he knows the law. the law. Right. For one thing. And then he's not going to admit in public everything he does like Trump does. What, right. What is he going to do that's bad that makes him more dangerous, worse than Trump? With the book burning, the, <laughs> um, the, I, I have no proof, but believe that the partisan legislature's swoop of, of the red wave that only happened in Florida. No, you said um, that. You know, so it's it's it's. I, I don't. I don't really have a handle on what he would do that is as uh, threatening as uh, the things that Trump would do. We know that Trump is all about big, bigotry, racism, supremacy. We know that he's all about retaining power. Um, and uh, we know that he doesn't really believe in the Constitution or the transfer of power. Um, so, I mean, that's really, really totally bad. Uh, and if we let that happen, this country is finished. Finished. You can quote me. Um, I don't know that I fear the same things from DeSantis because I, I, there's no real evidence of that. What do you think, Tim? Is there evidence well, I, that DeSantis I already said, it. I mean, he's trained as an attorney. Um, he knows the law. And he probably, like, like Richard Nixon, believe it or not, Richard Nixon ultimately respected the law and followed the duty of law. Yeah. And that's why he didn't put up a fight. He didn't have a, a constitutional crisis. Uh, the Saturday Night Massacre, he basically gave up after that. He could have fought it. He could have had a, a huge mess back well, then, uh, but he didn't. You're, you're saying that uh, the chances would make a mistake if he threw his hat in the ring right, right now. Yes, I but definitely that, that think it would be a big, Trump and huge mistake. The ring. Huge Trump, mistake. That leaves Trump. No, it's not the best approach, but it leaves Trump in charge of the ring. Trump runs the circus for the next year or two, uh, and DeSantis is well, relatively quiet. Does he run the circus, or do we have people like um, Governor of Maryland, Larry Hogan, <coughs> say that cost, um, Trump has cost us the GOP the last three elections? If enough, if enough leaders of the Republican Party start calling out Trump as basically a loser, um, maybe that puts him in his cage for a few, for three or four months. And uh, then, you know, maybe it's time to throw your hat in the ring come March, come February of next year. Uh, we're only talking about three or four months. Um, I personally uh, think that we always underestimate all of our new Gen Zers and the millennials, they turned out in force this last, you know, election, and they're going to continue to keep. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Out. They 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 may have turned out in force. And a lot of people are saying they are the future and they're smarter and more engaged. I, I'm not sure that's true, but assuming it's true, they don't get to vote, which is their only option for the next couple of years. They can't do anything for the next couple of years. Well, you mean in two years when the, we vote next time, they will be 18 and able to vote, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, what about, what I'm saying is that Trump will have the control of the circus for two years more. And it's, a, it's kind of um, a contention as to whether the young people will see through that or not. Well, we're forgetting something, Jay. We're forgetting about indictments. He's going to be swatting those things away like they were flies on honey. He won't have time to have all the time like he did last time in 2015 to uh, control the airwaves. He's going to be on the he's going to be on the news, but it's going to be uh, uh, all the legal entanglements that he's involved with. Don't you I, think? It's, it's a good point, um, but in my heart, in my heart, uh, may not be rational, but in my heart, I don't think he's going to get indicted. I think he's going to find a way out of that. He's done it before a number of times. He's no. pulled levers here and there and everywhere, um, and he's found a way out. Well, and I agree with you because, you know, there are some in the Democratic Party saying, we want Donald Trump to run in 2024. Are you kidding me? Just as you said, Jay, uh, he could pull a rabbit out of the hat, and he usually does some way, somehow. And, by God, you know, God forbid he would be elected again in 2024. So uh, be careful, Democrats, when you say such things. Because uh, you underestimate Donald Trump's ability to um, stay in the media and stay on top of things for two years. So if you ever hear a Democrat say, yeah, we want Trump to be the candidate, uh, the nominee for the Republican Party, um, guide him elsewhere. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So it goes to again the question of DeSantis. Let's assume let's assume DeSantis is the other front runner. Okay. Um, and and l- let me agree with you that now may not be the best time for him to throw his hat in the ring. But if now is not the best time, when is the best time? Well, probably April 2023, because you really want to get on that fundraising campaign. Um, you know, somewhere between April and May. I mean, you're still one full year away from the, you know, the heat of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the 2020, 2024 election. And I wouldn't think anything other than April time period. If I were DeSantis. So I have think, a question. Cynthia? Oh, sorry. I have a what question, you guys. What, um, what about what Merrick Garland said about appointing a special master, not a special master, uh, um, <laughs> An overseer yeah. for special, Trump, Donald special, Trump's, yeah. uh, someone that oversees special his- prosecutor. Yeah, that's it. A special prosecutor that oversees Donald Trump's campaign. That's an interesting uh, factoid. I think. That- well, we already had one of those, and uh, both sides ate him up. What was his name? Mueller. Yes. <laughs> you know, Mueller was a special is- investigator, a special prosecutor, right? and he was chewed up and spit out. But well, that's not. But the, you you say a, a special prosecutor to oversee his campaign. That doesn't sound very democratic to me. No, um, the investigation it, for the DOJ. Well, that would that's be what she's, that would be more DOJ, appropriate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what she's referring to. I think. Yeah. Did I get the right? Know, yeah. I the Department of Justice has is virtually tens of thousands of lawyers around the country. Uh, he doesn't have anybody. He needs to appoint somebody special. What, what, they're all busy? What is it? Well, I mean, why would you do it? Just to give the appearance that you're neutral and you're not going after Donald Trump personally. But um, if anyone's neutral, it's Merrick Garland. My God, he's milk toast, And um, I don't think he should do it. I think he should proceed. Because look at how the delay uh, of things to come by putting a new person in and starting really from, from square one. Uh, it's a bad move, I think. Well, it's just it's a delay move, and, and Trump yeah, it's a delay. Would love it. Trump would love it because what would Trump do? He delay would attack, that. He, he would attack the guy. Yes. Okay, he wasn't really uh, impartial, and uh, and 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 he hoped to get him either out of office or embarrassed or criticized, and, and then fold the whole thing because of that. I mean, that's out of his playbook. Who came up with that idea? It wasn't you, Cynthia? Was it? No, it wasn't me. <laughs> I heard I heard it on the news that they said Mayor Garland was thinking about if he runs that they would put, he would put some sort of a a special prosecutor to um to follow the campaign and make sure it stays on the up and up. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Like all um, good sources, Jay, we heard it through the grapevine. And speaking yeah, of the grapevine, I heard right. that we've run out of time. Oh, dear. <laughs> so guess what we get to do? Uh, Cynthia, why don't you start with your last thoughts about uh, either Donald Trump throwing his hat in the ring or the fact of whether or not you think he's a kingmaker still? I don't think he's a kingmaker still. I think that he always only had a third of the, the Republican Party and the rest of them sort of held their nose and voted for him. But they didn't this time. And I don't think they will again. And like, um, who is it, Mo Brooks, that said, you know, no, we want Ron DeSantis now. Um, so and Mo Brooks, of all people, right? Isn't that, I think he's coming out against Trump because he was wearing, he's the one wearing the flak jacket, right? At the rally before the insurrection. It's not the same Mo Brooks, right? So now he doesn't like Trump. Before he was ready to put on a flak jacket for him, but. Now he doesn't. So I think like what you said earlier is that will he be just as ready to pull that black jacket back off and say, OK, I'm all yours, buddy. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I don't know. But okay. we can only hope. That and that's a good answer. Have. I don't know. That's that's and fair. <laughs> I think what we need to do is hold the media accountable for giving him airtime. I think we need to keep the media accountable for not giving him the benefit of the doubt or um, 
you know, making him being labeled the de facto leader of the Republican Party. That's what they keep saying over and over and right. over. And if you say something enough times, you can count on it probably going to happen. So I think that's the biggest thing. We need to start, you know, Twitter, Facebook, whatever way we can start calling the media out for what they're doing and how they have to just stop. All righty. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Jay, final word. I think Trump is something gonna, sage. I know he's going <laughs> to he's going to see you know, opportunities here. First, he makes himself a victim. You know, that's the first thing. Oh, they're all attacking me. Oh, it's so bad. And uh, disgraceful, you know, how they attack me in, in a free society. And, and then, he's, then he's going to try to repair the damage. Um, and he's going to try to distract everyone. And he's going to attack anyone who attacks him. And little by little, as he did before, remember, they all criticized him after, not, uh, I said 9-11. They all criticized him after January 6th. Uh, and then, they, you know, they turned around. All these big names, they all turned around. Query, will they turn around again? Um, I think he's got a plan. We can't count him out here. Um, he's down, but not out. And I think at the end of the day, he has a fairly good chance of coming back. And I think if nobody services, you know, to put him down as, a, as an alternative, as, as a, you know, an adversary in the campaign, um, he, he will stand a good chance of, keeping people's attention and uh, thus uh, rebuilding his, um, his following and his, um, you know, his possibilities. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not optimistic about this. I, I, uh, I think that unless somebody surfaces from the Democratic Party or even from the Republican Party um, to be um, you know, a counterweight on him, uh, he is going to have the floor. All righty. I asked for a sage comment, and I got it. Thank you, Jay. Very much. That's uh, all for our show today. We've run out of time. I'd like to thank my co-host, Jay Fidel, and of course, Cynthia, Lisa, and Claire, as always. Uh, Cynthia, I know we won't see you next week, so I wish you a very festive and warm Thanksgiving. Thank you. Same to you guys. All righty. Yeah. I'm Tim Apicella, your host. Thank you for tuning in for American Issues, take one. Uh, join uh, Jay Fidel for American Issues, take two. And until then, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.